Hello and welcome to an overview of Magpie Nesting, part of Blackman & White's Zebra Cut software. To start off with, we'll bring in some parts, so we can either import via our filters here, or open a native file to Rhino. So I'm using 3DM for this example, which we can import, but we can import DXF, uh, PDFs, CF2s, even HPGL code, so there's plenty of options to import your parts. As I'm using our logo, it's a very small example, so I'm going to scale this up purely for illustrative purposes so you can see what I'm doing a heck of a lot clearer than on a very small file, like so. The most important thing is we have those parts on a layer called parts, like so, and subsequently any sheets we're going to use, we also have those on a layer called sheets. So I can create a sheet interactively, or if you want, you could say, which you would probably do in the real world, you say you've got a 10 meter sheet, for example, by 1370, and there you go. There's your sheet, ready to go. I'll use a smaller example purely for what we're doing here, though. So again, select it, make sure it's on the right layer. If you wanted a bit of a visual key, we could come in here and say, do you know what, all of my parts, put it on a red layer, just so you can see that in between the differences. From there, we can just say, go ahead and start nesting for me. <clears throat> While that's nesting, I'll talk you through some of the differences here. So we can change the rotation to be either three, every 45, 90, or 180 degrees. We can allow flipping of the parts. We can change the, the gap between the parts if we want. So we could tighten this up and say, sure, let's do a one mil gap with a two mil gutter, with the sheet border as a salvage around the edge of the sheet. So two mil gutter there. Let's say we want to run it for 30 seconds, for example. We could say, sure, run it again, and it will start nesting for us. As it nests, the efficiency graph in the bottom left here will show us the, the yellow and red blocks are showing you the efficiency, so the percentage of what it's managed to use out of the sheet. The blue line <clears throat> is showing you the amount of parts that's fitted onto the sheet. That's only going to come into play if you have a sheet that's too small and it hasn't managed to place all of those parts within that that example that we're using, for example. Uh, we'll also do part in part nesting. So if it does find that it can fit something within it, for example, if you had a, an aperture in the B, for example, it's clearly seen it can fit them elsewhere. It would always centralize it, which is quite nice. So you might see other nesting software. If it puts that part, it will place it here. This has an algorithm to say, well, if I'm gonna use that waste, I'm gonna pop it right in the middle Instead of cutting it here where you might get some errors where it goes to cut it can snag the material where it doesn't have enough vacuum or what have you this will place it slap bang in the middle make a nice easy run for the cutter uh, to show if you had a sheet too small let's draw another rectangle here we'll make sure it's too small to give it a bit of a test and again let's make sure we're on the right layer and if you have multiple sheets, you don't need to delete them. I can just flick this switch, <coughs> excuse me, uh, unnest, select the parts I want to nest and the sheet I want to nest to, and it will work that out and not worry about that bottom sheet for us. If I just come off that selection now, anything that's green is in the sheet, anything that's blue is missing. So it's quite nice, it shows you what's been placed where and what you might need to put on another sheet. You can also see your blue line change here. So it's gone higher up because we've managed to fit more parts in. We can also go to a table layout so we can see how many parts versus efficiency we've had. And you might say, okay, I really wanted that part in there or I prefer that nest. And you can go back in time and select whichever one's going to be more suitable for what you want to do. It just so happens that we've selected the one that's got the most parts at the bottom. I can change the efficiency to say, actually, maybe I want more efficiency, but less parts. Totally up to you. You can select whatever you want. Just to go a step further with the complexity, we could go into the software and create a nice curved sheet. Like so. So using the curve tool, I can create something quite bizarre and random that we wanted to nest to. I could create another shape as well whatever it may be. 
So we can clear the nest and say, grab all of those shapes and make them fit within that profile, like so. Ah, there we go. So if we don't have the sheet on the right layer, it will tell us that. So we need to select those and pop them onto that layer. So I can now select my parts, select the sheet, and start nesting again. What we can also do is you might have one kit that's split over two different materials. For example, we might want the blackman and white at the top on one part of the layer, and then the cutting excellence on this bottom sheet here, which I'll show you now. So I'll just stop the nesting for a second and clear the workspace. I can select the black one and white and say I want it nested here, which it will do so. Because we have selection on, it will only go to the ones where we place it. I'll just let that nest. So we're on a 30 second runtime, you could easily have that a lot higher than that and get a lot better yield out of your parts. So I'll stop that there. And what we can do now is then, obviously from here, we would select that and export that as a DXF or equally send it to the cutter from here. It's all ready to go. We could then take our other parts, select the other geometry and make a nest from that. So one kit, two sheets, very easy to point them wherever you need them. You could equally select five different remnants, five different sheets, and it will work out the best way of fitting them over those five remnants for you. Just zoom in and we can see what it's doing there. So it's using the best it can, the smallest parts possible from the sheet. Hope that makes sense, and any questions, let us know. Thank you for your time.